Um, so I, I'm Mark. Uh, I used to work at Aristocrats. I've spent 10 years in the casino industry. So Aristocrats, one of the land-based manufacturers that uh, we heard about uh, during the last talk, and uh, the major products we worked on was uh, Heart of Vegas, uh, Far Far Far, which is an Asian-specific uh, game uh, published by IGS in Taiwan. Um, they just released Cashman Casino recently. And uh, I've been in the casino industry yeah, 10 years. So I've been in Australia, I've been in Las Vegas, and most recently in San Francisco. I think um, for Mercury, our key games are Scatter Slots and Infinity Slots. So Scatter Slots is ranked around uh, the ninth grossing social casino uh, title in the US. Infinity Slots uh, would be in the uh, low 20s in terms of uh, grossing. And then we've got two new games, Slots Error and uh, Scatter Poker as well, which we just launched. Um, I think the last point is actually pretty important. I uh, personally love to gamble. Uh, ever since uh, you could go to a bar in Australia, you would go and play slot machines. This was something that we did. So um, the games inside of uh, Heart of Vegas, something like More Chili, I've actually personally been playing since I was 18. So, so 12 years I've been playing these same games and I'm actually quite passionate about not only the game mechanics, but um, the experience as well. And I get often asked, like, why would anyone play social casino uh, if you can't win real money. And I'm actually one of the people that really enjoys playing more chili, as an example. Um, so it's a, really, uh, it's a really interesting space. And I think um, when you're considering getting into the space, so you're considering making a decision, it's really important to keep you know, the core slot players in, in, in mind. Um, an example I'll, I'll give you is um, uh, when a new user comes into your game, and uh, you, they, they, their first experience, their first day they're playing, quite often people think what we should do is trigger a bunch of really big wins in that first session to make people feel like they were really lucky and this would give them a really positive experience. If you read a lot of the App Store review um, kind of uh, compliments and complaints, you'll see they're just absolutely littered with things like this money cheated, this stole my money, I was winning too much, and then the machine changed and took it away from me. The, the players think that the machines are rigged, and, and to some extent they're right, they are losing machines ultimately, that's how uh, slot machines work. But making, uh, making that a reality in terms of actually adapting the math to uh, cheat the player is not what they're looking for. They're looking to win despite uh, the odds being stacked against them. So things like this, you've got to be really careful thinking like the core slot player, would they enjoy this or would they not enjoy this? So here, here are our games, some kind of basic metrics. Uh, I think we're the 11th largest now. Uh, I think we're slightly over the 1 million daily active user mark. Uh, I think we're almost 350 employees. Uh, these are the two games uh, specifically. So scatter slots at the top, this was kind of our uh, marquee product. You can see the way it works is kind of like Candy Crush where you have uh, a journey mechanic through the game and then as you play the slot machines, uh, you achieve specific missions, uh, collect 50 diamonds, unlock the chains, these kind of activities and um, you then progress and unlock additional slot machines and additional features in the game. Um, what's unique about this game is it's, it's um, number one, I guess, a little more interesting than your standard slot machine where you just play to unlock games. Um, and, and number two, the graphics are not similar to what you would see in most social casino games. They're dark, they're gothic. Um, it's almost a, an RPG style of graphics. And, and, and as a result of this, what we've found is this uh, similar to the huge talk, if you heard it earlier today, was that it's actually activated a younger, uh, more male-skewed audience than your traditional slot, uh, your traditional slot audience, which is usually elderly female. The second game at the bottom is Infinity Slots, I guess our second title. It's more of your traditional uh, social casino mechanic in terms of what you would uh, regularly see. The focus we have is both on an innovation in terms of progression as well as the slot machines themselves are quite unique in, in the market. 
um, and then 100% proprietary content. So we're a privately owned company. Um, all of the content is developed in-house. In we don't, at the moment, pipe in any content from, from outside, uh, outside studios. So we talked about this kind of high-level market growth numbers. It, probably not as interesting. Uh, I, I guess the takeaway here is the market is big and it is still growing. Um, I think Q4, we started Q4 last year, we started thinking, oh, this market really is starting to slow down. You saw a lot of the big players um, have stable DAUs, stable revenue, and then Q1 was actually pretty good across the board. I think Playdica, as an example, grew by something like $45 million in revenue just themselves. So there's still, uh, there's still room to grow in the market, but it's big and it's certainly very competitive. So this is what I did is just took the top grossing apps uh, and stripped out poker and stripped out bingo, so just social casino, and you kind of put them on the board and you think, okay, they all look very different, but there's some, you know, people who don't know the industry as well, there's some specific subcategories inside of slots. So the first one is the manufacturers. This is in the red. These are people who produce the physical cabinets and have uh, pent-up demand for those slot machines. Um, as I was explaining before, more Chile Five Dragons, you can play them on the floor, you can now play them on your mobile device. These guys have got a competitive advantage in actually two ways. The first way is they've got a back catalogue of games, you know, hundreds of games sitting on the back catalogue that they can uh, take and then bring to market. The second thing is that when you're developing a new game, the, the next greatest slot machine, they're not only developing it for the mobile space, but they're also developing it for the physical cabinet, which means they've got a cost advantage against you because you're developing it and distributing it just for a social casino. Uh, the blue one is casino IP, so this is similar in terms of pent-up demand. These are titles that are really well known on the casino floor that the social casino operators uh, have identified a difference in IP licensing and then have taken those games to market. Wheel of Fortune, Wizard of Oz, Grease, Deal or No Deal. These are the type of titles that are very popular on the slot floor and then uh, by no coincidence they're very popular uh, in social casino as well. The orange is operators in terms of casino, physical casino operators in terms of um, their players are moving from the physical casino company like Penn. They've, they've got them inside of the casino. Once they leave the casino to play slots, they want to make sure that they get their marketing messages in front of them. So their competitive advantage really is the marketing expertise for casino players specifically and that ability to uh, cross-promote them from a physical casino into, a mobile, uh, into the mobile game. And then the green colour is, I guess, the most difficult position to be in because you don't have the casino audience, you don't have that list of IP, you don't have the list of slot titles, so really what you're competing with is being better in terms of operations, in terms of development, in terms of running the games, than your competitors. So it's the most difficult position to be in, um, as well as uh, you don't have that competitor advantage. So if you're a private indie developer trying to get into this space, you're in that last bucket and it's a very difficult place to be. You'll notice that uh, you know, we've got here scatter slots uh, and infinity slots. These are both owned by us. These two games here are owned by the same company. Um, and uh, the vast majority of the other titles are owned by Playtica, so one company. So it's not a really a huge diverse uh, range of companies here in that third bucket. So the, the way we thought about this is instead of tacking the full market and just you know, going about it as everyone else does, is try to segment the market and develop apps specifically for that audience. So scatter slots, we talked about this more advanced player who wants this quest-based mechanic. The gothic graphic styles is a little bit more uh, male skewed than female. Uh, Inf Infinity is the more the casino simulator. Slots era, this new game, we're still... Uh, um, it's, it's, it's a new game, but it's effectively looking for that advanced player, but a slightly uh, female-focused audience rather than a male-focused audience. And then our scatter poker, which is a, a new take on poker. So this is kind of how we're thinking about the market, is making sure that we uh, specifically target different niches with different products. This goes not just for 
um, the product itself, but the ad creative that you're going for. So um, we have an idea that this uh, Tarzan looking character um, uh, will do well with females in the US. And we actually had a Halloween theme based on this graphic launched at Halloween. So the idea of not just thinking about uh, segmentation inside of your product portfolio, but also in terms of ads and uh, marketing and any other collateral that you put out there. Um, we, 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 be we believe not only the advertising platform, but the gender, the game is also very important in terms of whom you're targeting and then the creative that you push to them. I think one of the things in the social casino market is people are very quick to replicate your experience. So you can see this is scatter slots, this journey-based mechanic. We put it out, it does well. You can quickly see Play Studios, Heart of Vegas, Slotomania, huge. We'll also add this kind of quest or achievement-based mechanic uh, very quickly. Th the point is not that, um, that I guess the industry is kind of well known for this. You'll see a lot of tech companies follow other tech companies. But the point is that you need to be continually innovating, otherwise the competitors will catch up with you very quickly. So focus on what everyone else is doing, take inspiration from it, but if you're not leading the pack in terms of innovation, the rest of the market is just going to catch up to you very quickly, and companies, uh, those three other companies that I talked about before, they've got those competitive advantages. So you have to keep pushing the edges and you have to keep innovating with the core slot player in mind. So there's examples of these meta games, uh, which, which I would uh, say this is a meta game in terms of over the slot machines that enhances the slot player experience. And then there are things that are just distracting from the slot player experience. So I've seen uh, examples of an endless runner on top of a slot machine. This is not what a slot player is looking for. They find enjoyment in that specific slot machine. So the meta game you've put on top of it has to um, has to work with, with that player experience, if that, if that makes sense. This innovation is also not just in metagame, but in slot machine, slot design uh, itself. A lot of people think slot design is really, really simple. I make some images spin, I, I make some volatility, we've got a great looking slot machine, let's push it to market. This is just simply not the case. A company, uh, public companies, IGT, Aristocrat, these companies are spending hundreds, $200 million a year developing slot machines. This is so they can really design a machine specifically for that player. So if we take an example, let's use uh, this game down here, and we talk about hit rate. So hit rate is out of every spin or every 100 spins, how many of them is a winning combination? Yeah, so let's say we design a game and we say we want high hit rate, meaning you press the button uh, frequently and you get wins frequently. Yeah, let's say uh, the feature frequency, so the feature is a secondary uh, game with inside of the, the base slot machine. Let's say we want that to happen often, so they trigger this feature and go into a second screen. And let's say we want the game to be uh, high volatility. So meaning you have big wins, you have big losses. You're still going to start at 100 or still start at a dollar. You're still going to end at 90 cents, just the ride that you take to get down there. These three components, any game designer will tell you that adding them together will not make a good slot machine. You're talking about a game that wins frequently, that has high volatility, meaning I play, I'm going to be getting lots and lots of really small wins, and then it's just going to slowly bleed me with one big, you know, one big potential win. If you then match that thinking in terms of math with the graphic style, this looks like a more hardcore graphic style, in, in my opinion, and that's very subjective. Um, you need to make sure the math and the graphics are kind of merging together to make a really good experience. So if this tree character is very important, he has to be high value in terms of the slot uh, pay table. So there's lots of examples here where you actually take the exact same math model and you apply different graphics on it, and the one will have very different results from the other. So I guess continually innovating in slot machines is also very important. And um, at least in my opinion, um, where we've been over the last three or four years is 
the slot manufacturers had this higher co uh, quality content, it was really innovative, or it was much more advanced than what we were seeing on uh, Social Casino. The Social Casino companies have now caught up and are actually innovating a little bit faster than the traditional machines you would see on the floor. So this is something I think it's really important. I mean, this is why people are coming to play your slot games. This is our new game. I, 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 I'll go over it very briefly. Effectively, it's the same quest-based mechanic, but with poker. Um, one of the reasons that we're here is to look for distribution, not only of our slot games, but for our poker games uh, in the different Asian markets. So if there's anyone out there, you know, pl please reach out. This is kind of a, a, a somewhat of a generic slide around the team, but the important takeaway here is that this is hard work and this is uh, optimizing slot games is not easy. So you really need a really passionate team, not only that's excited about the game, but excited about working together as well because ongoing optimization is very, very challenging. So uh, this is some photos of the, you know, the Merca team and, and kind of celebrating success is a big part of, uh, of what we do. Yep. So that's it. If you have any questions, you know, please let me know. I have a question. Um, so, in reference to uh, scatter slots, uh, what caused Merca to pursue a darker, more RPG-esque uh, theme? Was it a shot in the dark? Were they specifically hoping to cater to uh, younger males, or uh, what was the thinking behind that? I think, like, in retrospect, it's like, uh, you know, we can talk about the niche-segmented audience. We wanted to do something, or the, or the team at the time I wasn't there, wanted to do something different than the original classic market now. So having cartoony graphics, having um, uh, what you see so frequently just didn't seem like the right choice. So we uh, chose to invest specifically in making really rich, detailed uh, graphics. The gothic style was kind of an outcome of that. Do you know if it was a, a surprise to the team um, when the uh, demographics skewed more young male? I think based on the art style and the gothic nature, it was not as much of a surprise as you would think, yeah. Uh, outside of North America, what geos do you find your style of product resonates most deeply in? Yeah, um, so there's like a, a lot of the speeches that I've been to um, over the last few days of talking about regionally specific uh, products for Social Casino, and um, John of the Play Studios even kind of alluded to it, slots, 90%, 95% is going to be US, New Zealand, Canada, Australia, you know, maybe some Nordics and European countries. So the vast majority of current slots are in those tier one markets. The, um, there is some value in uh, some of the Asian markets. So I think John Slide had uh, IGS, far, far, far. Um, you know, reasonably high up in the rankings, but the lion's share currently for slots is in those tier, mark, tier one markets. Uh, I have another question, kind of leading off of the, the uh, Asian markets, but also in general. Um, you mentioned distribution earlier, and that Merca particularly is looking for uh, distribution partners. Um, is that only for online and mobile, or are you guys looking at potential uh, land-based partnerships as well, and why or why not? It's, it's a common question is like, would you take the slot content from a uh, social casino and put it onto a physical cabinet? I mean, the answer is we absolutely would do that deal. If you look at North America as the biggest market of slot machines currently, I think there's something like 900,000 slot machines in the market as a total, and I think they turn over about five to 10% of the market. So you're talking about a sales cycle of 70,000 or so units. This is difficult to make a scaled business out of. We would definitely, uh, we would definitely like the idea of having a Lady Fermita slot, but it's difficult to actually uh, execute on that. The other thing is getting a product or a slot machine game to a physical cabinet is a very lengthy process in terms of approvals, uh, compliance, etc. That's just to get the game to market. Then you need to actually get someone to sell it and put it into a cabinet. So it's a lot of work. It's something we could consider, but it's a, it's it's a lot of work for you know reasonably small pie. I have one final question. Um, you mentioned earlier that loyalty programs are uh, kind of a competitive advantage of the uh, land-based realm. Uh, Merca doesn't have any sort of loyalty program, does it? 
So there's a loyalty program within inside of the game in terms of as you progress, uh, you will get better deals and access to more features. In terms of a physical loop, in terms of uh, earning real, raw, war, real world rewards, not yet. So is that something like, uh, in terms of structuring a loyalty program, like for a purely online or mobile-based uh, social casino developer as opposed to, say, a land-based uh, organization, uh, what are the differences that you guys are considering or how, how would it function? I think, um, I think if, like on a basic concept, there's loyalty programs and then there's the real prizes that you're giving away, right? So we could do a deal right now, like every uh, thousand coins we sell, you've got some uh, physical good with it. But we believe that people are more interested in the chips than they are that physical good. The overlap with physical casinos in terms of MGM being able to promote their brand to the Play Studios lo loyalty base is a marketing play for MGM more than it is a uh, revenue driver. Do you know what I mean? So they're trying to bring people from the social casino back into the casino. Um, so we don't have that relationship. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.